In this video I will tell you what I think are the 8 best features of V-Ray 5 for 3ds Max, but before we dive into the details, let's go through a quick overview on which topics I will cover in this video. V-Ray 5 now contains a huge library of pre-made assets, the new Cosmos Asset Browser provides 3D models and HDRIs, the material library has a huge selection of ready-to-use materials, and by using material presets we can pre-configure our shaders. The new frame buffer contains great features such as a new light mix that enables us to modify the illumination in real time and with compositing we can modify already rendered images directly within the frame buffer. Additional features are for example the new randomizer that will help us to avoid ugly texture repetitions, a fully overhauled sun and sky system for more realistic exterior lighting and with additive dome lights we can combine multiple dome lights to achieve a more interesting illumination. So let's first take a look on the new Cosmos Asset Browser and this you can open by clicking on this button up here in the V-Ray toolbar. Once you do that, it will open like this new Asset Browser that for now contains 3D models and HDRIs. So let's check out here the 3D models first and we can see that there's different kind of subcategories here for furniture for example. And then within there's additional subcategories. So there's a lot of different areas that you can explore and a lot of different models that you can find. For example, also for vegetation, different trees different indoor plants, even vehicles or peoples that you might need to populate your scene. And once you want to use a model, you need to download it first. You can see if the model has been downloaded by this blue checkbox up here. And if you want to download a model, you just either click it and then download it from here, or you can click this small blue button at the lower right corner here. And then once the model is downloaded, you will get like a small notification here at the bottom that indicates that the download was successful. So once you found a model you liked, for example, this bed here, you can click it, get some additional information about the size or wireframe and so on. Then you can just import it here in your scene or even easier, you just click and drag it here at the part where you want to have it. For example, the floor in this case, and then the bed will be placed at the right position here in your scene, in this case, directly on the floor and everything will be set up correctly. So let's first check out what kind of object we're dealing with in here. And this one is a V-Ray proxy, which is very nice because we can easily duplicate and instance it. And it's very good for the memory usage of our scene. But if we want to modify it, it's also possible. For example, we can just choose this show whole mesh option. This way he will load the high risk mesh into the scene. And now if we want to, for example, remove like this blue bed sheet in here, we can just apply an editable poly modifier here on top of it and then just select the bed sheet and remove it. And then this way we could easily modify here the object according to our needs. Also, if we open here our material editor, we can see that the model itself already comes, in this case with a sub-object material applied to it, with different kind of VMware materials, which all already have the correct physical properties to shade correctly. So this way they should be working in most of your scenes without any modification. But if you need, you could still modify it in the material editor, for example, change colors and so on. Now let's just delete this bed here again, because I already have some decoration in this room here, which all comes from this Cosmos Asset Browser. And you can see I have placed these kind of trees here in front of the window. And at the moment they are shown in this preview display option in here. But of course they are way more detailed, which you can always check by clicking on this button in here. And now let's just make a small preview rendering and see how it looks like. You can see here they all shade quite nicely and correctly. And they also work very good in conjunction with each other. And you can use them for many kind of scenes and many kind of different environment lightings and so on. And now speaking of environment lighting, we can choose a different kind of HDRI setup in here because at the moment I'm using this sun and sky system in here. But now let's delete this one and let's try out some of the HDRIs that come with the Cosmos Asset Browser. So for that, let's first check out here this HDRI category and we can see that there's two different categories in here, one for daylight HDRIs and one for evening moods. And for example, we can just choose this one in here, We're just clicking it in our scene the same way like we did before. Then a dome light will be created with already the proper HDRI here set up. Now we can start the rendering and see what kind of result we would get. 
So now you can see that our lighting here changed of course, but at the moment the problem is that the sun is coming from the wrong direction, so it's not really going inside here of our room. But that's also easily to be changed by just enabling this option in here, lock texture to icon. And then the HDI will be rotated alongside with here our dome light. So for example, we can rotate it here 90 degrees. Then we can see that the sun is already here. You can see that from the flare here, of course. And for example, we can rotate it a little bit more so that we have this nice light pattern here on the wall. And then the flare is coming here from the right side. And like this way, you can just use and try out many of the different HDIs from the Cosmos Asset Browser and get totally different lightings in your scene and explore your scenes like this way. So apart from this Cosmos Asset Browser, now we also have access to this V-Ray Material Library Browser. You can open it by clicking on this button up here in the toolbar. Then you can see it's a nice material library that has already a lot of pre-made materials all sorted in different kind of categories. There's, for example, a lot for car paints or stuff that you can use for architectural visualization, for example, like different kind of stones, different kind of tiles, different kind of woods and so on. And then when you want to know more about a material, you can just double click it and it will tell you what kind of material here it is actually. In this case, it would be like a V-Ray material and you can see how many submaps it uses and what kind of submaps are being used. Now just to explore how we apply an actual material and that's just very easy. You just, for example, click and drag the material here on the object that you want to use it and then it will be automatically updated. You can try out different kind of materials in here, for example, this one or that one or this red one in here. You can try out lots of different materials in a very short time and just explore the look of your model like this way. So you can also further customize your materials. For example, if you found a material that you like, for example, this one, but you don't like the color, for example, we need it here in an orange color, then we can just easily choose this option up here and then it will automatically open the material editor once we apply it. And then, for example, we can do these kind of basic modifications. For example, now choose an orange color and then the material would be set up correctly in our case in here. So this way you can modify all of the materials. You don't need to use them exactly of how they are used in the library in here. You can customize them and then this way use them also as base for more complex materials that you maybe need and which are not part in this material library yet. Apart from the material library, now we have the option here in V-Ray materials to choose different kind of presets. So that's a new option. And now you have easily access here to all of these different kind of presets. For example, we can choose the preset here of chocolate and then immediately all of the correct physical properties here would be loaded or different kind of glass, gold, uh, chrome and so on and always it gives us a much nicer starting point to further on customize our materials because we're not always starting here from this gray base material with no reflectivity or refraction but we can just choose something that looks basically similar like the material that we need to create and then further on customize here all of these different kind of properties so you can see there's all kind of different materials already set up in here for example there's something like water which you may need quite often or for example also different materials like this chocolate in here or ceramic or different kind of plastics rubber and so on you can easily just switch through all of them in here and just easily find the one that you think suits your starting point the best and then further on customize it based on this one in here. So that's also a very nice option, can also save you lots of time in order to speed up your workflow. So v 5 comes along with a completely overhauled frame buffer. We're gonna check out two of the main features of it. We're gonna start with a light mix feature in here. What we have here is a scene that has a lot of different lights in here. And now with light mix, we can easily after rendering or even during rendering in real time modify like the intensity, the saturation, the color and so on of those lights and various other elements of the scene and like this way speed up our workflow a lot. So let's first check out what we need to do in order to make it work and we just need to go here to our render elements and then just add like this V-Ray light mix element in here and there's only the option here how we want to group here our lights. At the moment I just grouped all of the different lights here in different layers. For example you can see here 
all of the ceiling lights here are in this ceiling light layer. So in this case, it would also make sense to choose here to group it by layers. And then in the light mix, we will have access on all of those layers and all of those lights in those layers. So now the only thing left to do is to start a new rendering in here. Then we can see what kind of stuff we can here modify in our light mix. So we can see now that this source here automatically switched from the default RGB option here to this light mix option. Then we have access here on all of the different elements in here. We can first switch all of them off then just go through them one by one. For example, we have here only the lights from the top, here only the lights from the side, here only the lights here in the back, and so on. We can go through all of these different kind of layers and see what kind of lights are part of this. And then if we combine all of them together, we have here our finished image. So we first can, for example, see here those lights from the side, for example. Then we can make basic modifications, like for example, increase here the intensity, or just bring it back to its default. And then if you click this option in here, you can choose different stuff like, for example, changing the temperature of the light, making it more cool or more warm, changing the saturation, or just totally defining different colors in here. For example, now I made the color completely green. Now if I show all of those different elements here together, we can see that now this color here is set to green. You can see that apart here from the light layers that we set up here on our scene, V-Ray automatically creates these three layers here, environment, self-illumination and rest. And all of those contain basically elements which also contribute to the look of our scene, which are not coming directly from the lights. For example, you can see here in the background, we have this self-illumination part of the shader and this one will be stored in here. And then we can even make modifications on this, for example. We can even choose different kind of colors, for example, example, we can make this one here red. That's all the self illumination parts of the shaders. And then in rest, for example, there's other stuff that wouldn't be part of any of the other layer. In our case, this one is pretty much empty. But in environment, for example, we have the environment lighting here of our scene, which also contributes quite heavily to our scene. We can, for example, switch it off. Then we can choose here the lighting of those columns. We can make this one here, for example, this kind of crazy color in here. So now that we created here our custom configuration of the scene, we might want to save this one. And that can be done over here. We can call this one here, for example, orange green, save it. And then I saved out several other configuration files earlier. We can easily load them over this button in here. Let's load, for example, this one right here. You can see that now the lighting here of the scene completely changed and it even automatically loads all of the other configuration files that it can find in the same folder in here. You can easily switch through all of them and this way basically have your scene configured in lots of different kind of lighting configurations. For example, you could have like a daylight and a nightlight configuration of your scene. And all of this is possible now with this new V-Ray light mix feature. So another new feature in the frame buffer is to do compositing directly inside of the frame buffer. And here we have this example where we have this car that uses this kind of red car paint. And for example, we want to change this car paint to a green color after the rendering is already completed. And this we can now easily do in the virtual frame buffer. So we can just render, for example, one time and then just generate all kind of different car paints from it without having to re-render. In order to do that, we just would need to add here to the render elements this back to beauty element. So what this is doing, I will show you once the rendering is completed because that's easier to understand. And then since we want to change here the car paint of our scene, we would need to have a mask for the car paint. And in this case, I will just choose here a crypto mat. And then this crypto mat will be set here to material names. That means it will generate one mask for each material name here in the scene. Then we can simply select here the car paint or the tires and so on. So once this is basically done, the only thing left to do is to just start a new rendering and then see what will happen. And now once the rendering is completed, we can switch here our RGB source to a composite source. We will get a picture that looks exactly the same way like the RGB source. That's because we used this back to beauty render element before. And this one is responsible to just correctly add all of those render elements together. And then we will get exactly the same result. So by this, you don't need to add these render elements here manually and everything is done automatically. So now we can see, for example, that we can disable here the refraction pass or the reflection pass or for example, the self illumination pass for the background in here and so on. So 
All of this is quite nice. And now we can add different kind of color corrections in here. For example, we can add like a new color balance on here. And for example, just make it completely greenish here, like in this way. And then we can see that this whole thing here works quite similar like in Photoshop. So if I put, for example, the color balance here at the lower layer, then we will see that only the ones beneath are affected and the ones on top are not affected. You can also add, for example, this kind of color corrections to certain layers and link them to layers. For example, now I link this one here to the refraction layer and then basically only my refractions are getting tinted. In our case, we want to change the car paint here of our car. So we would need to have like a global color adjustments at the very top. And now we would require the use of a mask in order to only affect here our car paint. So for this, we just click here on our color balance and then we just add a new mask layer in here, which we ran it out earlier. Once we do that, first of all here, our color balance completely disappears because our mask initially is completely black. We can see that by just watching here our mask as a preview once we click this button on here. And luckily we have these handy pickers in here. We can just pick certain elements here of our model. For example, now I click on the car paint and then only the car paint is added here to our mask. We can also verify this here when clicking this button here again. We can add various other elements, for example, here to our mask. And then with this minus picker button, we can also remove them again. And like this way, we can customize our mask to whatever need we have. So now we only need to add here our car paint. And then we can just change here the color of our car to whatever color we think fits, for example can make it like this orange color and so on. And this way totally are free with adjusting the color here of our car paint in compositing. In v 5 we now have the options to modify here our UVs during render time. That's a quite nice feature. So here we have this scene, for example, we have like this collapsed object in here and every of these stones basically is like one element in here, which we can select. But the problem is that at the moment, all of the UVs of each stone are exactly the same. So I have like this kind of texture map in here. You can see that at the moment, all of the stones use UVs, which are assigned to this patch in here, this A1 patch. And now we want to find a way where we can basically have each of the stones have its own unique color and number and so on. And this we can just easily do while render time with this new V-Ray UVW randomizer. So here we have the shader for this object and the moment it's just like a standard viewer material with a V-Ray bitmap here piped into the diffuse map. And now we have access here to this mapping source. We can now add this UV randomizer in here. And once we do that, basically we can just easily connect it here with our mapping source and then adjust certain kind of parameters here in these properties tab. We can see initially nothing has changed and that's because we first need to tell the randomizer how we want to add these randomizations. In our case, we want to add them here by element. So once I click on this here, then basically each of the element here in my object will have a random UV assigned to by following these parameters in here. You can see that the U and V space will be offset between zero and one. And then we have a random rotation between zero and 360. If we don't want to have the rotation, for example, we can just set this value here back to zero. And then we only have the offset at the moment. And we can also change the scaling here. For example, we can set this parameter here to 1000. Then you can see that some of the stones have a much smaller pattern than the other ones. But in our case, we don't really need that. The only thing we want is that we have like these even steps here in between these different patches. So we can see we have eight by eight different patches in here and we only need to transfer those values basically here into the steps eight and then also eight here for the V offset and then each stone will have its own unique number and own unique color and our result in the rendering should look much more random than we had initially and all of those steps will be added during render time so you can see here in my viewport nothing has really changed. Everything is done during the render time and you don't need to do any kind of modifications here on your actual object. So in v 5, we have a new Sun and Sky system or a new addition to the Sun and Sky system rather. And at the moment, we just use one of the older traditional Sun and Sky systems. You can see while they work kind of okay, in case of this sunset situations, they don't really look very realistic. And that's especially where this new improved Sun and Sky systems come into play. 
because this one works much nicer in these kind of sunrise or sunset situations. You just get way more realistic colors in these kind of scenarios. So in the scene in here, I combined the new sun and sky system with these V-ray aerial perspective atmospheric effects. And they work very nice because we get these kind of haze effects in here, which has the result that the mountains here in the background, they look further away than the ones here in the foreground. And that just makes the scaling of the scene appear much bigger. We can then try out here different kind of sun positions, for example, and also switch here our sky model to one of the previous one to just see what kind of difference they make. And they can also work quite nicely depending on what kind of scene you want to do. But the new one especially works, as I said, very good in these kind of situations where the sun is very close to the horizon and then the colors can just look much nicer in this kind of scenario. So another new addition to VR5 are the so-called additive dome lights and we have here a scene that has two dome lights at the moment but the moment just one of them is enabled so the whole illumination that you can see in this scene here only comes from this dome light if we now check out the other dome light we can see this one has a completely different illumination completely different hdi sun position and so on but now with additive dome lights we can basically mix both of them together so we can't only use one or the other we can enable both of them and then it will blend both of them together you can see for example this kind of bright spot here comes from this part here of this hdri and then these kind of clouds here come from this HDI and by adding the different dome lights here together we can get a totally new unique illumination and then by this we can achieve a much higher variety in our illumination of our scenes by just blending different kind of HDRIs together and just get a much more unique and beautiful result. So there you have it, those are the eight favorite features for me personally for VR5. Of course, there's way more features added as well. You can also check them out on the Chaos website. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to this channel. Also check out my Patreon where you can download many of my demo scenes and try it out by yourself. And other than that, see you in the next one and take care.